we're ready to begin prepping these new cartridge cases so that we can run our expander ball through the neck. Now listen very carefully to me. I'm not just wasting my words. There's two reasons that come to my mind of why you want to run that expander ball through the neck of that new cartridge case. A lot of guys miss this and even guys have been reloading a while and it's okay but it's important. The two reasons that you want to run the expander ball through the neck of that cartridge case is one, we're going to take the mouths of every one of these cases and we're going to make them perfectly round because we're going to be seeding a bullet into the necks of these cases and that bullet is going to be perfectly round. So we're going to take all of these cases and we're going to perfect them. And remember, it, it is not abnormal for you to have um, cases that are new that are out of round. Remember, brass is malleable and that's the gold behind brass so don't knock it it's a beautiful thing you just have to do your job and set that roundness to be perfect the second reason that we're going to run the expander ball through the mouth of this cartridge case is because we're going to set the neck tension what do i mean by setting the neck tension this is what i mean we're going to take these cartridge cases and we're going to load them up to where they are completed cartridges and we're going to take them out to the range and we're going to we're going to fire them in the chamber and we're going to take these cartridge cases we're going to bring them back to this bench and we're going to reprep these cases and we're going to resize these cases and when we resize these we're going to run an expander ball through the neck. Well, think about it. If you just simply seat a bullet as is, the neck tension from the first load is going to be different than when you come back and you resize it with the expander ball. And that is what a lot of reloaders do. They simply take the new cartridge case, they simply seat the bullet, but their neck tension it is nowhere where they need it. So what we're going to do, we're going to run that expander ball into the neck of this cartridge case pretty quick, and we're going to set the neck tension, and we'll have these ready. Ideally, this is what's ideal for any reloader. It's when you start with a new cartridge case, and I'll tell you why. Two primary reasons that I can think of. The first reason is, is the new cartridge case is set to a SAMI minimum chamber. In simple terms, what does that mean to you? What that means is this. If you were to go purchase a box of 30-30 ammo off you, the store shelf, that ammunition, you could fire that through any proper functioning 30-30 Winchester rifle. That's because those cartridges are set to a SAMI minimum chamber to where the factory says, okay, these are sized to where they'll function in any rifle. Okay? There you go. That's your new uh, cartridge case uh, set to a SAMI minimum chamber. And that's that's where all these are going to be pretty doggone close to. The second reason you, it's ideal to start with a new case, and this has to be the greatest advantage, is because we can take these loads, it's a brand new case, and we, we've set the neck tension, we've done everything right, we take them to the range and we fire form them to our chamber. So now, instead of shooting these through multiple lever actions, you're going to develop a load for your lever action. It's been fired through your chamber, and that's going to be what's going to help you to beat factory. So it is ideal to start with a new case. It always is. Okay? I'm going to read something. Um, this is from 
Starline Brass. And I'm going to kind of throw my uh, two cents in on this. Starline suggests neck sizing or running the expander ball through the mouth of the case and then chamfering the case mouth inside and out prior to loading. The expander ball works twofold. It removes most of the corrosion inhibitor inside the case neck and also makes the case mouth round for chamfering, okay? Which we already talked about. But this is something additional right here. Cleaning with stainless media can also remove this coating, making loading a little more difficult, all right? So this is just my two cents. You can take what you want, leave what you don't. So we have a coating on this, and in a minute we're going to prep this uh, case so we can run the expander ball through the neck. But I, I want to just elaborate on this. You, you see this on social media. You know, guys, uh, I, I get wanting to have a clean cartridge case. I get wanting to do it fast. But this is what you don't have to do. You don't have to run these so long in, st in your stainless media or any media to where they are so shiny they look better than a Harley Davidson. Keep your Harleys looking good. This just has to work. So I would say when you're cleaning your cartridge cases, they just have to be clean enough to do the job and no more. Okay? They need to be clean enough that when you return it into the chamber, it's going to function the way it was and it will cycle through the rifle. Past that, you're just wasting your time. So now let's talk about what we have to do to prep our cartridge case. And um, what we're going to do is we have to lube these cases. That's the prepping I'm talking about. When reloaders think of lubing a case, they think of taking this, and we're going to revisit this after we get back from the range, so don't worry. Follow along in the series. But what they want to do is when they think of lubing a case, they think of taking this lube, and they think of you know applying it to the outside portions of that case but they forget the inside portions. Pretty quick, we're going to run an expander ball through the neck of that case, and we're going to create a lot of heat. Heat is your enemy for your expander ball. You don't want to do that. So, we need this. This is the Imperial Application Media with Dry Neck Lube Okay, by Rating Reloading. I'll put a link in the description box below. Uh, turn it upside down, shake it. When you order this, it comes with a, uh, a another recharge uh, bottle. It's got the graphite. You'll simply add a little bit of graphite to that when uh, it needs to be charged, and you'll be good to go. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take these cartridge cases, and I'll work. And this is how I do this. I count to five. Let me get a little graphite on there. When you're uh, on social media, you'll see uh, different guys that are learning how to reload. And, and they say, this is what they say, they say that when they're resizing the case, they push the handle down, but when they go to bring the handle up, the case feels like it's stuck in the die. Well, that's because they're not lubing the inside of the, the case neck and I can't see I, I got no light here guys so so bear with me so anyway that's what you're gonna do with with all these cartridge cases just like that just gonna get some lube on the inside of those necks and I can see that uh, I'm running out of a <laughs> I need to recharge this how perfect hang on don't go nowhere Here we go. This is the uh, the actual lube. This is the recharge. So, if you um, turn that media upside down, shake it, and you don't get any more graphite, yeah, put a little bit in there like that, and uh, make sure you put the lid back on the recharge. You don't want to spill it. 
and make sure you put the lid back on this when you're done. You don't want to spill that, okay? Put the lid back on. That was perfect timing. I do I do a lot of uh, cases in this. I run I run a lot. <laughs> So now, as you can see, I, I couldn't really see where I had finished off because, well, one, my, my lighting is to your advantage. And two, I, I, it was a, there we go, it was a running low on recharge. So, so now I can sit here like this and uh, lube every one of these case necks. So now once, once we get our die set up, when we run these up into the die uh, to set our neck tension, it's going to be smooth and you don't have to worry about uh, messing that expander ball up okay there we go so I'm just gonna work through these um, and I, I do want to uh, real quick um, reiterate um, when you're cleaning your cartridge cases you know it's okay to do a good job I, I, I always applaud that I do when you do a better job, you do a better job. But there's a point where um, the return on your dividends are nothing. It's one thing to get a cartridge case so shiny perfect that it just it looks great and you're proud of it. And, and I get that. But it's another thing to take all the ammunition that you're loading up and trying to get every single uh, cartridge case to look just shiny perfect new um, shinier than new you know it's almost kind of like a, a madness state if you ask me and really for me a cartridge case that I'm gonna put on my wall uh, which I really don't do that I, I don't do that I don't like load a cartridge case up and put it up to admire it I, I just load them to shoot but if I was gonna have a cartridge case that I could you know set up somewhere on my desk or somewhere where I could admire it I, I can't say I would want it to be super shiny I would want it to be kind of more real world something that I could say well you know that's actually something that I would probably actually really use when I'm up in the the back country you know is it tarnished yeah it's tarnished it's it's tarnished it's it looks the way it does when it looks the way it does it's not something it's not so I'm not knocking anyone that wants to have a case that looks super shiny but if you want to shoot all you gotta do is get it clean enough that your internal case pressures will uh, duplicate what you did in other words you do want to clean the inside of that cartridge case out you do you want to get any carbon that's in there so that the volume of that case is going to be the same as the time before. I mean, think about it. When I go and I fire this case, if I come back and I simply wipe this case down and I take it back out to the range, you know, maybe there wasn't enough carbon in there to make a difference, but there also could be. So all you want to do is get it clean enough that it's pretty much where it was. Make sure your primer pocket has no carbon buildup and uh, you're ready to go. You don't have to worry about that primer pocket uh, looking a particular brass color. That's You don't need to do that. Not at all. All it has to do is be void of an obstruction. And I think that's the best way to uh, really think about that. You don't want obstructions inside the cartridge case and you certainly don't want an obstruction in the primer pocket or the flash hole and um, you know it's like on my 44 mag cases there's a lot of times that I go and I head out to the range I rip some out and I come back and I take those very cases and I scrape the primer pockets out make sure the flash holes look good and I make sure that inside internal of the case doesn't have you know nothing anything major in it and I simply hand wipe that case down and then I load them back up and I go out and guess what I get I get repeatability and that's what we want 
So remember, your goal is, isn't what it looks like. Your goal is, can you duplicate what you did the time before? Now, when you're done, put your lid on it. Take care of all your equipment. Put your equipment up when you're done. Put all that up. And there we go. Guys and gals, that's the end of this video. God bless. We'll see you on the next.